How about now when we turn the microphone on? That helps. Can you hear me now? Good. Okay. Good stuff. All right. Mute that and that. Hey, Wayne, well, is my microphone working now? Yes, it is. Your screen is a little um, liney, if you will, from the camera, but we can hear you. What was wrong with your What was wrong with your mic last time? I don't know. After I got done with it, I went to the software with it and tested it, and it worked fine. <laughs> Isn't that always the way that it goes? Yeah. Oh boy. All right. Well, we'll just jump right into this thing. I hope everybody's having a good weekend. Uh, I hope we're all remembering um, what Memorial Day is all about and remembering the fallen so that we can uh, have our hamburgers and barbecues and beers and all the fun stuff that we enjoy. Uh, it did not come free, that is for sure. So just take a second and remember our uh, fellow military people and... Um, Take a look at the show here. All right, so I'm gonna do a screen share. I'm gonna mute that microphone here and here and there. All right, and then we'll do a screen share. Has anybody here ever, you can put it in the chat section if you'd like, has anybody sight read, does anybody know how to sight read a quick set smart key lock without taking it apart? any further than this so right here so if you've got this cylinder right here and it's out of the housing and we don't need to actually take the plug all the way completely out of it does anybody know how to use a key blank or not even a key blank if you know how to do it backwards and sight read this and make a key for it that's usually how i do the three keys if i don't have the key i'll go ahead and just cut cut a key that fits it currently then Three hit. Gotcha. Right on. Good. So you're you're a couple steps ahead of the game. That's good. So here's what we're looking at. We're looking down into these little windows. I call them windows. I don't know the exact terminology for it, but um, I call them little windows because they kind of let you peek down into the lock and see what's going on in there. Now, if you look at it from the bottom side, if you look at it without a key blank in there, you're going to be seeing everything backwards, right? So when you stick a key blank in and then you look at it from the top side, that registers in my mind as it needs to be cut this much to be able to fit so that it, it, it falls into place. Uh, when you look at it backwards, it would be exactly that. It would be a backwards cut. Your, your deepest cuts would then be your highest peaks. So I'm not trying to confuse people. I'm just saying I personally choose to use the key blank. So I'll actually take the cylinder, slide a key blank in it, and then it'll push all those wafers up, and then you'll be able to see what's happening. Now, if you're familiar with the smart key system, you'll know how this actually works. And these wafers that we could see in this last picture right here, that little guy right there is one of the wafers that we're talking about, okay? So he's moving up and down inside here, and then there's a big V-notch cut out in the middle of it to allow this sidebar to drop in, okay? So that's that's you have to understand how it works before we can understand how to sight read it and build a key for it. So here's what it looks like from the bottom side here, okay? You can see big changes. Now, these changes don't mean a lot to the average person. However, to us, this is gold right here. We can use this as information, okay? So this way you could sight read it from the bottom. Just remember, instead of cuts, you, your, your lower points are your higher points. And I'm not trying to confuse people. I'm just trying to let you know how it's actually working. Once we slide a key blank into it, and this is my favorite way to do it, because my brain doesn't want to overcomplicate things. It wants to say, I slide a key blank in and I see the cuts. And one of the ways that we actually came up with this method um, was from sight reading keys on uh, for pin tumbler locks. You take this, you take the plug out, and you leave all the pins in place, and you slide a key blank in, and you can see all of your pins on the top, and just 
judging from experience, you can usually, I can usually get pretty close just by writing the numbers down, taking that key, punching it out on a right hand or a punch or whatever key machine you have. And it'll tell you, it'll show you if you're close. If everything's even, then you hit it on the first, first try, uh, perfect, and you're good to go from there. But if you needed to cut down, maybe maybe one was, you know, one or two just needed an extra cut on them, then you can go back and you can say, look, we're close, but we got too high, and then make those two extra cuts and it fits. Same exact concept works here. As you can see, we start to in, insert the key blank. It starts to raise these wafers up. Okay. Once it raises them up, you can see how it's starting to bring this one up and then it'll bring these other ones up as well. It'll give us a much more clear picture as to what's going on inside the lock when we can, when we shove that key blank in there. Okay. And then what you want to do with sight reading is you want to get a guess. Your first one is your guess. And I'll just write the numbers down and I'll see how close it is. And the idea is, is that you want all of these wafers to be even like this, okay? You don't want them to be up and down and all mixed around like they were up above or on the, on the last one, right? This is not what we want to see, all mixed up all over the place. And this is what we want to see everything falling into place in line. Now, just because you got them online doesn't mean that the key is gonna turn over and it's gonna work. You might have them all in line, you may have all the cuts and the, and the discrepancies correct, but they may all be one cut too high or two cuts too high or a cut too low. So what I like to do is, is guess high, because if I guess high, I don't have to scrap a key if I guess too low, and then have to start over. I can continue to use that same key. So if I guess this one as three, one, two, three, five, I can then, and I'm wrong, I can then just continue to cut this key down to four, two, three, two, six, and it will work on the next try. Okay. And here's what those wafers look like, all lined up and ready to turn over. You'll also notice the sidebar is ready to drop into place, okay? So everything's lined up here and the sidebar is ready to drop into place as well. This is what it looks like with the key blank inserted. You can tell we've got, so this is another combination here. So you can see this one's really deep. So just like this is a perfect example of like sight reading, just like you would sight read a key, right? About halfway, four or five, Got something pretty shallow, one or two, maybe a three or four, one or two, and then we got a five or six cut over here, okay? And then here's what it looks like when we insert the key. Same exact cylinder, different after we, after we decode it and at least get a start, then it starts to fall into place and you can tell that the sidebar is getting ready to drop and the lock cylinder will turn over, okay? A couple different shots of that. And then here's what it looks like from the bottom as well. So you can get an idea of what it looks like from the bottom and the top. Now here, we're actually gonna, we're gonna kind of go over some of this stuff just a little bit more. But here, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but it appears that Quickset is getting ready to throw another wrench in our wheelhouse. Brass, looking colored keys and something new. It looks to me like we are coming up with a Gen 5 quick set smart key. Look at these wafers down here. Can you tell me the difference between these wafers? There's a Gen 4 and there's a Gen 5. And this is brand new. I mean, brand spanking new, brand, brand new. Like went to the hardware store 30 minutes ago new, okay? So here's a Gen 4 wafer. Here's a Gen 5. We have more cuts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it looks like they're taking 
the they're trying they're probably in my personal opinion they're probably trying to consolidate um the nine cut schleg <clears throat> wafers and be able to use them on both locks because if you're not aware of this too quick set smart key also has a schleg version or schleg key wave version of this lock all right and it has nine depths so now we've got nine depths what else do we see that's new about this Okay, here's the old version. Here's the new version. It looks as though the ends are getting some work. So, how, anybody have the smart tech decoder, quick set lock tech smart key decoder, fancy electronic one? I put it in a special little case. This little guy here, okay? What are we looking at when we look in this scope and we look inside the lock and see what's actually happening and see what's going on in there? What are we looking at? We're looking at these wafers and they're changing the design of the wafer. And it's gonna take a little bit more research and I'm working with um, Keith from LockTech uh, the guy that invented the decoder. And there could be some possible problems for this and not being able to see all of the same stuff that we've been able to see. So I'm going to leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger there. And I'll just tell you that we are working with Keith and he's going to be a guest on this particular podcast one of these days or this show. And in the very near future, it's not going to be today, but it's going to be in the near future. And we're going to talk a whole lot more about this lock, okay? Here they are side by side. So things are changing, and Quickset is dead set on throwing us a couple, couple more, throwing a couple more wrenches in our wheelhouse here. Now, I'm going to see if our new video is able to upload. And if not, then we'll just go over to the bench. And it apparently appears that it is not ready yet. We got some super slow internet going on today. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try something new, and I'm actually going to log my phone on. <clears throat> I'm going to do a stop screen share. I'm going to log my phone onto this thing, and I'm going to shut the mics off here, and we'll see if we can take you over to the workbench and see what we've got going on over there. Mute microphone. And we cannot hear anything. See if it's coming through the car.
for a website. Can't hear you, Wayne. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you okay. there, Wayne. I don't know how, have I been off for a while? Or did yep. it just happen? No, you're off for a while when you move okay. over to your de desk. Uh, I love technology. Okay, so you can see this wafer hangs out on the bottom. If I insert my cell, you can start to see the differences in the top up here. So we can see how cut, 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 probably if, you know, fairly deep cut, medium cut, shallow, very shallow, and kind of a shallow medium cut here. If we were to sight read this out, it would probably be something along the lines of 69205. Okay, so 69205 is what I'm guessing this is actually going to be. When we actually insert the key in there, that works. Okay. And let's say we let's say we sight read it at 58215. We're close. We're very close but it's not 100% there yet. It's not turning over. All the windows and all of the little wafers are all lined up, but it's not turning over. So this is where I like to go a little bit high because then if we come back and we cut all of those cuts one cut down, once we have them all flat and straight, that's that means that you've got fairly close to the code or fairly close to the cuts. Okay, you've got the algorithm correct. You just don't have the exact numbers correct. So we throw it back in the machine and we turn it all, or we cut it all down one more and all of a sudden, voila, the key works, okay? And then if we actually take the key, the original key and put it on a decoder, you can see that it does actually line up with what it says it's supposed to line up with. So here we've got a six, We've got a nine, we've got a two, we've got an O, an actual factory O cut from Quickset on a Schleg key blank. Very rare for Schleg to have an O cut and a five, all right? So you can get all of that information without ever having to take this lock apart, okay? Does the same thing for the Quickset lock right here. So you'd be able to insert. Obviously, we've got a deeper cut in the back, shallow cut up front, and you can see 
how these wafers all line up in this manner, just from this right here, okay? And then we could take that. This is the key for it. This is the one that's actually gonna work it. You can see how all the windows line up, all nice and flat. And if we were to decode this, we'd be sitting at two, one, four, I'm sorry, three, six. We can get all of that information just from sliding a key blank directly right in. So that's what a six is gonna look like, just sticking way up out there, real nice and tall and proud. And then something, you know, a lot less, like a one cut is gonna be something like this over here, okay? So once you have all that figured out, <clears throat> I'm gonna shut this one off. Once you have all that figured out and once you start to get a gauge for it, I would really highly recommend, it's actually no different than a pin tumbler lock to, to, to get, once you kind of get that algorithm down and once you start sight reading it and seeing it, you just have a little bit less room. You can't see the perfect line. It's not as distinct. There's more uh, debris in your way, if you will, but it just shows that it can be done and it can be done extremely easily. Um, it's not as hard as it, as it possibly could be. Now, if you don't have the reset tool or anything like that, or you don't wanna bother taking it apart any further than that, this is a great way where you can just make keys for a bunch of cylinders. In fact, I make it a practice to save these and take them out of the field. And I'll have my, uh, I'll have my guys say, you know, we'll, we'll save these and uh, use them for training and say, here, let's make keys for smart keys today. Let's sight read these, let's go through this. And we'll actually go through and try and make a little training program out of it. Um, that's what we're going to end up doing this month. We're going to go over the same thing. And I'm showing my employees and my people the exact same things that I'm showing you here so that we can keep those skills sharp. You can train your employees using this information. And it's just going to help everybody do their job just a little bit quicker, a little bit faster, make more money, bring more money in for the company. And it helps everybody all along the way. Does anybody have any questions? about sight reading? Does anybody have any questions about um, what was covered today? And do you have any questions or comments about what could be covered in the new generation five coming up from Quickset or what I'm referring to as the generation five? Feel free to unmute your microphones. Jim, you got something to say? I pretty much do exactly what you just said. Your mic is off. Try your space bar. What about now? Oh, wait a minute. Um, maybe my sound is off. There it is. Sorry, go ahead. I pretty much do just like what you said. Um, and I do, after I make a key, it's very good to use this technique because if you come across a house, they don't have keys for half the doors. Mm -hmm. And you do it for one. Like key for the rest of them. Yep, and, exactly. And if you mess up, you got a pre-cut key for your next job. That's it. Yeah, there's not. There's really no downside to it. So I apologize. I had the sound down on this computer when I'm going back and forth between phone and uh, and um, computer. I have to turn the sound off, or we'll get some really bad echoing. Uh, any other questions, comments, concerns about sight reading the QuickSet Smart Key Lock in both QuickSet and Schleg keyways. Yeah, Wayne. Go ahead. With, with the, I I love that reset cradle. Would that yeah. uh, core fit in the reset cradle? Yeah. So, I mean, I got one of those in every truck and I have had for years. They're I, great. They are. They're great. The only problem with them that I've had is I've had to go through two or three of them because it seems like I get about 10 resets out of them and then they break. <laughs> I don't know if they're making them cheaper now or what, but. Well, I have, do you have the red one or the black one? I've had both. Yeah. <laughs> and I've broken both of them. And I don't, I don't even use them that often, but uh, it seems like 
it seems like I get maybe a couple resets out of them and that's about it. That's kind of why I actually started doing more of the site reading on them uh, more than anything else. The smart key tool is nice um, when you can use it or when you need to, but if, if you do have access to it, taking it apart and um, just using the cylinder is pretty, pretty slick. Uh, has anybody else seen the Generation 5? Has anybody played with it? Did anybody else know that there were some changes made? I haven't seen it, but okay. as far as the cradle, yeah, yeah we've gone through so many of those things. You, yeah. You've had a bunch of them break too, huh? Oh, yeah. 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 I've switched over to, if I do use a tool, I use the better resetter. The better resetter. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, to each their own, whatever, whatever works. If you've got them and they work, use them. If you use something different and it works for you, use it for sure. Um, just know that uh, it is in the works that we will, I will have Keith as a um, guest on the show. We're going to talk about the LockTech Smart Key Decoder and what it means for the Generation 5. Every single time a thing comes out, a new tool comes out, we will have something that it makes you feel better. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We're gonna have to end the meeting. Um <clears throat> I do not know who's doing that, and that is annoying. But um, we've got somebody hacking our meeting here, so we're gonna have to wrap it up. But we'll see you next time, guys.